The only way I can characterize Olotomasi's first 20-minute intro to refuting Matt Walsh's critique of James Saxton's view on marriage is a deranged diatribe. He spends the first 20 minutes poisoning the world, constructing a narrative about Matt Walsh and conservative commentators before he plays Matt Walsh's comments. The poisoning the world fallacy is a type of ad hominem fallacy where someone attempts to discredit an argument by presenting adverse information about the person making the argument before the argument is even presented. The goal is to create a negative impression of the person in the audience's mind, making them more likely to reject the argument without considering it objectively. Other than me describing his behavior, let's get right into his video and let him demonstrate it himself. Recording. Good evening. This just in. <laughs> Red Pill 1. We're Red Pill 101. <laughs> All right, so let's get started today. Uh, this is uh, I'm here in uh, Las Vegas, Nevada. This is uh, Red One Studios, and uh, just wanted to uh, start riffing on a few things that are going on in the quote unquote manosphere right now. Should we even call it the manosphere anymore? How about we call it the manos? No, uh, we're not calling it no. that. No, it, it's no. it's just the the locker room. The manosphere sounds like a. It sounds like a. Like a period. It's a gay bar. Yeah, like a menopause. We need something different. We actually do. It's the locker room. The locker room. The locker room. Don't even go there. <laughs> well, I tell you what's funny. Here's 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 just so we can get started. Let's go. Let's let's start with this. The red pill is not the red pill. The red pill is whatever anybody wants it to be right now. And as I said back in uh uh, December of last year, right before, I should say, on our uh, Rule Zero end of the year show, we make predictions. And one of the predictions that I made uh, on that show was that by August, you would not recognize the manosphere. I was right. Actually, I was right probably in June. But I said by August, and now we are just approaching October. And here we are. So what's become of our beloved red pill slash manosphere slash uh, men's self-improvement uh, niche, whatever you want to call it. Uh, well, now it's a political vehicle, and now it's a political football. And we've gone from making pickup artists the boogeyman to making those red pill guys the boogeyman. And the characterization, rhetoric, and material of what red pill content creators put out is the definition of the red pill. That's a theoretical definition of the red pill that Ruro likes to hide behind. But then there's also the apparent or functional definition of what the red pill is that's determined by the behavior and material of its influencers, advocates, and promoters. The same way there is a dictionary definition of what feminism is, or socialism for another example, the observed function and presuppositions of feminism in real life are different from its conceptual definition. The same goes for the red pill. There's a lot that can be said about the definitions of a phenomena and where and how to source those definitions, particularly on the potential rebuttals that could be made against the point I have just made. But the main point is that it is not in bad faith to direct criticisms on material from a group or community that calls itself by a particular name. Whether the group or community adheres to the theoretical definition of what they claim to be, red pill that is, the one at fault is not the one offering criticism on the material of the group, but the individuals in the group which is something that Rolo Tomasi has backwards. He keeps attacking people who criticize red pill ideas from people who call themselves red pill and purport to be producing red pill content. This is really strange and suspicious behavior. And before we get started in today's video, I'm going to be digging into the uh, Matt Walsh, uh, the most recent video uh, of him criticizing uh, the red pills take on uh on marriage and the reason why you get the scare quotes from me today is because uh much of this is just simply engineered re-engineered rehashed nonsense from uh real well really the last election cycle because that's what we're about to launch into right now 
one of the things I would like to start with is a saying that I can't remember who said this, but I've been re-quoting it and paraphrasing it for quite some time. If there is no boogeyman, no one gets paid. Now, who's the boogeyman? The red pill is now the boogeyman. Those red pill guys. Yeah, those red pill guys. Those nebulous red pill guys lurking in the dark corners of the internet and the dark web, web 3.0 or 5.0 or whatever the hell they're talking about right now. And as I said, what's old is new. And so now we're also moving into the quote unquote intellectual dark web, although it's probably like 3.0 instead of 2.0. Uh, 1.0 would have been what the, the Cernovich, Sam, uh, Harris, uh, Weinstein. And I don't mean Harvey. I mean, Brett Weinstein. Um, I, well, I guess you could probably throw Jordan Peterson in there. Uh, the, uh, intellectual, uh, Illuminati, right. So whatever they are, you're going to see them pop up. Pro well, they're already kind of popping up. Everybody's sort of jockeying for, for positions right now. But uh, as I said before, if there is no boogeyman, nobody gets paid. And so now the most convenient boogeyman is the red pill. This is absurd and ridiculous. The idea that red pill content is in any way, shape or form significant to the elections and that Republicans care about it is delusional. Political conservative commentators, including the Daily Wire hosts, talk about the red pill just a tad bit shy more than they do about the family divorce court system, which is to say, almost not at all. The views they get on those videos show how disinterested their audience is on the red pill. If you look at all the videos that the Daily Wire hosts produced in the last 12 months, how many of them are about the red pill? Of all the videos they produce weekly and hundreds of hours of content they put out every month, they only mention the red pill once in every several months, unlike gender issues and cultural stuff. Which would be counterintuitive if the boogeyman, which is the red pill, was a lucrative topic to talk about. Rollo Thomas's boogeyman hypothesis is vapid. And I'm going to riff on uh, some of Mr. Walsh's uh, misinformation. And I mean, I, I, actually, it's fake news. It's engineered to be fake news. And I'll explain to you why here. But the red pill has now become sort of this bugbear of traditional conservatives. Or as uh, uh, Stephen Crowder called them, and I, thank you for this, Stephen, uh, big con. The big they are con the is biggest con. Daily Wire. So today we're going to start talking about some personalities of big con. One of them, of course, is Matt Walsh. Then we've got Michael Knowles. Then we've got uh, Jeremy Boring. Then we've got Candace Owens. And we're probably going to see some more people get uh, brought on board for Daily Wire because I've seen this. I saw this happening really kind of uh, eh, probably the better part of last year. Uh, there's this positioning uh, on conservative media for who's going to be the host media for the 2024 election cycle. And I'm fairly certain that Daily Wire has decided that they're going to be the ones because it sure as shit ain't going to be the buzz or excuse me, uh, it's, or, yeah, uh, the blaze. It's not going to be blaze. It's not going to be Prager you. These comments reek of conspiratorial thinking, a modality of thinking that begins with the presupposition that everything happens under the influence of some syndicate. All that you have to do is point your mind at anything, then construct a narrative in your head using specious arguments and comparisons. Rollo Tomasi is making the presupposition that the only reason the Daily Wire might be more influential than the other organizations that he just mentioned is not because they are more well known, not because they have produced more popular material than the others, again, lending to them being more well known and having a larger audience. No, it's because, quote, they have decided, close quote, they are a syndicate. A syndicate makes more sense in his head than the reasons I mentioned, which is a modality of thinking of a conspiratorialist. In essence, it's a worldview. In fact, I wouldn't be surprised if Daily Wire bought out PragerU at this point, um, because they're practically the same entity right now. I can't even tell the difference between like Ali Beth Stuckey and uh, 
uh what's the what's the black girl's name amala or something like that off of prager you she may yeah, as well amala. be whoever by the way whatever traditional conservative big con pundit that ends up on whatever podcast you all might as well just be on the same the same channel right now anyways so this is pure utter bs he cannot tell the difference because he has a deranged hatred of conservatives and has a conspiratorialist modality of thinking. He does not watch their content. He doesn't even know Amala Epinobi's name. To say you cannot tell the difference between Amala and Elibeth Stucky is to claim that you have watched both their content and came to that conclusion. Which also means he would have heard and seen Amala Epinobi's name at the beginning of every single episode when she introduces herself and says her name and when her name is put on screen multiple times every single episode. The name of her channel is her own name, yet the great and feared Rolo Tomasi struggled to remember her name. And the only thing he could remember after hours of watching her content that's no different from Elibeth Stuckey's was Amala. Doesn't seem like he even knows that she is no longer with Prager U. These are all signs that he doesn't know the person he's talking about, let alone know the person's content well enough to claim it's no different from someone else's content. On that note of comparing Amala and Aliyah's content, if you actually do know both their content, you would know for certain that there's differences between them. Ali has more religious content than Amala. She's a Christian and Amala is an atheist. Ali talks about topics that Amala does not cover and vice versa. Amala produces more content than Ali and does more reaction videos than her. Ellie is more conservative with her views and opinions than Amala and she talks about them on a show. Since they are both conservative, one more so than the other, they will have the same conclusions on many topics. I wonder if it's those shared conclusions that Roller will try and use as demonstrative that they are both, quote, reading from the same script. Since the conspiratorial mind cannot fathom the idea that two people can come to the same conclusions on certain things without being controlled by a syndicate. So like Brian, like, yeah, well, we'll, we'll get we'll get to Brian. We'll get to Pearl. Yes, you're going to hear a little bit about Pearl today. Here's your red meat for the for the uh, your, your preview of the red meat. So today I wanted to dig into what Matt Walsh was talking about. And I have to sort of rewind the tape a little bit here because the reason why I say that the red pill is now kind of like the bugbear for uh, traditional conservatives or trad cons or big con is because they need an enemy. They need a low, low hanging fruit. They need uh, a, a, an easy target. And if you can't find an easy target, you manufacture one. And that's exactly what Daily Wire has decided that they're going to do in the shape of, let's see, Michael Knowles uh jeremy boring and of course matt walsh right now and i'm sure there's probably some others that i'm not i'm missing right now as well ben Those shapiro the, ben shapiro ben, uh, yeah, but ben i expect that from right i'm actually surprised ben hasn't piled on he probably will after this video hi ben um let me mention a couple of facts first for context before we analyze what rollo just said in September of last year, before any of the Daily Wire hosts started talking about the red pill and marriage, a certain Pearl Davis called out the Daily Wire hosts by name on Twitter on the 21st of September. Everything else that Roller will reference and pull up on screen happened after the tweet from Pearl Davis. They were responding to her and probably the people who agreed with her tweet. I assume they looked at the replies to her tweet and saw a lot of red pill pundits agreeing with her. It began with Pearl, not Jeremy Boring. So this narrative that the Daily Wire needs the red pill for views and money is delusional. They rarely talk about the red pill, once in every several months. Again I repeat, it's nonsensical monetarily to talk about the red pill four times a year if they get a lot of views from talking about them, which is not the case. 
they are most viewed videos are not about the red pill. There's plenty that they can talk about and do talk about that generates more views for them other than the red pill. Which begs the question, where is Rolo getting his facts from? Could it be that he's trying to concoct a narrative to try to accuse the Daily Wire and their hosts of doing what he is hypocritically doing for views? Um, however, I wanted to point out that uh, what first drew my attention to all of this was uh, a post or a, a tweet, a, an X tweet or a Twix, whatever you want to call it, on Elon's new social media app. Um, but uh, so Jeremy Boring had come up with some uh, tweet about how the red pill is anti-marriage and you can't be uh, a conservative and be anti-marriage. I'm like, where is this guy getting? And then I see a similar message or a similar tweet. I mean, almost not verbatim, but certainly paraphrasing Jeremy Boring from Michael Knowles. And of course saying, those red pill guys are anti-marriage. Those red pill guys are contributing to the degeneracy and the moral decay of the, uh, of, of, of the United States and of Western society. And we really need to get back to our cultural foundations and our virtuous virt uh what a value you know enabled past we've got to swing the pendulum back to where it was before guys and if you're not on board with marriage well then you are uh, if you're not for us you're against us and then of course matt walsh has to chime in and i'm like where are these guys getting this and i'm looking at some of the tweets and i i'm looking at like similar words and, 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 and jingoisms and, uh, similar. It's almost as if, um, they're reading from the same script. Now I don't have this queued up for you right now, but there's a very kind of infamous, I guess, meme video of, uh, anchors, news anchors, like local news anchors that are syndicated. They're on a syndicate, um, of local news stations. And in that local news, in those local news stations, the, uh, the hosts, look kind of generically the same you're not going to find it man don't even look for it or maybe it. you can i don't know i'm not sure hey, if you can find it uh, that's fine you don't have to interrupt anything for it but the uh the long and the short of it is, is you've got all of these hosts from all over the place and each one of them is reading from the same script they're using this i mean almost verbatim they're using the same script and so what it is is it goes from from each and every single one of these um these local news stations and it basically doubles up and it repeats it. It's, a, it's this big chorus of these uh, news anchors reading from the same script. Is that it right there? He's now acting on a pretense that he does not know why the Daily Wire hosts simultaneously started talking about marriage and the red pill. And that it was Jeremy Boring who started his assault with his tweet and all the Daily Wire hosts just slavishly followed him. In this video, he will play Matt Walsh's comments to a video that he did with other Red Pill pundits. And in Walsh's video, he put up the tweet by Paul Davis from the 21st of September calling out the Daily Wire hosts that he is responding to. Jeremy Boeing's tweet was on the 22nd of September. They were reacting to Paul's tweet and possibly other Red Pill pundits on Twitter who agreed with her, who also explicitly could have made the sentiments that marriage is bad for men, period. Rolo Tomasi saw the tweet by Paul and the tweets by other Red Pill pundits and he knows perfectly well where they, the Daily Wire hosts, are, quote, getting this from, close quote. He's just pretending for the moment in order to build his narrative. There's something really fallacious and sophomoric about the video he's about to play and the argument he's about to make about these news anchors. JRE news is all the same. No, that's, that's Rogan. Actually, yeah, probably Rogan probably one. broke that one. There you go. Yeah, I think that's probably it. I'll throw it up. Multiple. Yeah, throw that one up. Here you go. You're going to have to bring back uh, uh, Matt Walsh later, but go ahead and throw that one on.
News, Jessica Headley. And I'm Ryan Wolf. Our, our greatest, greatest responsibility, responsibility is, is to, to serve, serve our, our Treasure Valley communities, the El Paso Las Cruces communities, Eastern Iowa communities, Mid Michigan communities. We are extremely proud of the quality, balanced journalism that CBS4 News produces. But we are concerned about someone trying to be responsible, one sided news stories, plaguing our country. Plaguing our country. The sharing of biased and false news has become all too common on social media. More alarming, some media outlets publish the same fake stories without checking facts first. The sharing of biased and false, false news has, has become, become all too common, common on, on social, social media. media. More alarming, some media outlets publish the same fake stories without checking facts first. Unfortunately, some members of the media use their platforms to push their own personal bias and agenda to control exactly what people think. And this is extremely dangerous to our democracy. 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 There you have it. Congratulations, Daily Wire. You played yourself. You are now local local news station media because every single one of your tweets, every single one of your shows, every single one of your clips, every single one of your uh, coverage of really pretty much anything. But I'm what we just witnessed was Rolo Tomasi's modality of thinking. The fallacious principles operating behind that video is what governs Rolo's thinking behind his diatribe and conspiracies about conservatives. But before that, let's understand the fallacy behind the argument that's being offered. Purportedly, all those news anchors read from the same script. They were all syndicated to say what they said. How do you know that? According to Rolo, is because they all said the same terms and phrases without context provided. We do not know what came before and what came after those phrases. We do not know from what context and topic those phrases came from. We do not know what they were talking about when they said those phrases and terms. All we got was a chorus of contextless phrases and terms. According to Rolo's thinking, because we can find terms and very short phrases repeated amongst individuals, therefore means the entirety of those individuals' content is syndicated. From Moro's perspective, that's enough to conclude that that's evidence of being syndicated. Ideas and narratives are different from phrases and terms. Ideas are communicated or made up from arrangements and combinations of multiple phrases and terms. All we got were a couple of phrases and terms, not ideas, not narratives. In Rolo's mind, repeated phrases and terms is a sign of being bought and paid for. From that foundation and reasoning process, that is how Rolo will build his narrative about the Daily Wire, conservative commentators, and anyone who challenges the fear-mongering and convoluted rhetoric of Red Pill influences on marriage. His derangement towards the Daily Wire is clearly demonstrated when he claims that every tweet, every single show, and everything they cover is identical, as if he watches everything that the Daily Wire produces as if he reads every one of their tweets, as if he stalks the Daily Wire host's material. Let's watch this video and see if we can't identify who's the Daily Wire and who's Rolo Tomasi in this video. I want to go talk to Peterson. <laughs> Peterson, do you have any comments on the Nazi presence at your protest? The presence of Nazis and white supremacists assaulting people at your protest, do you have any comment on that? Yeah, I don't like Nazis. Then why are you... Why were they here? Well, well how can I answer are there, that? If, are there views in alignment with yours? At some point, yeah, you have I think to realize. That's a foolish question. Look, if you want to know what my views are, I've watched all of your videos. Yes. 
Including the yes, yes, I have. Yes. Then why wouldn't you ask such a question? Because, because this is my interpretation of your videos. You, apparently, That's I wanted all of the people who arranged the protest against you watched all of your videos. It's like, do you want to disavow? I have 150 videos on YouTube. No, you your lectures, which sparked the debate. Okay, okay. Do you I want to disavow the support? Could you let me voices? talk to her for a moment? Then, don't call me that, please. So, I have 150 lectures on YouTube. There's 500 hours of my views. Do you really if think you that you're worth all of that time? This is Jordan Peterson's first viral video where he was surrounded by protesters. And one of them accused him and said his material appeals to Nazis and white supremacists. She argued that that was the case on the claim that she watched all of his videos and that was the conclusion she came to from his material. That is obviously a lie. She most probably never watched a single full video of Jordan Peterson. That is exactly what Olotomasi just did with the Daily Wire. The only videos or clips that he may have watched from the Daily Wire hosts are when they talked about the red pill or any red pill related topic like dating, feminism or intergender dynamics. I'm I'm noticing this because I'm seeing you guys throw the same narrative at the red pill. So it's the red pills against marriage. The red pills for vasectomies. The red pill is for X, Y, Z. And every single one of you reads from the same script. Guess who the syndicate is? Daily Wire. Have fun with that one. So when I see stuff like this and I see uh, the same talking points parroted back over and over and over again, I can only draw one conclusion is that you guys are all reading from the same script. You guys I don't understand why my best friend says this man is a man of integrity. All this rhetoric is deceitful. He knows perfectly well where they get the idea from that the red pill is against marriage. The Daily Wire is not the first to say that or come to that conclusion. He knows where they get the vasectomy issue from because he was on fresh and fit defending his treat on vasectomy. Now he's throwing aspirations on the Daily Wire as if they are making things up out of nothing just to attack the red pill and get views. The ideas that the Daily Wire hosts have about the red pill are not unique to them nor originate with them. They are not new. There's no need for a syndicate. His pretense is shameful, embarrassing, and disgusting. You guys, whatever your uh, production team is, whatever your PR team is. In fact, I'm 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 halfway convinced that you guys don't even do your own tweets at this point. Now, do I have Rolo? Doesn't have any proof of that. No, I don't have any proof of that. But I but I can show you the similarities in those tweets, man. And every each and every one makes the same fundamental mistake. Those red pill guys. You guys never mention a name. You guys never say who you're talking about. Is it me? Is it Myron and Fresh? No, they point out Andrew Tate. Is it Andrew Tate? No, Andrew Tate's Andrew Tate's yesterday's news. Trust me. By by the one reason they never mention his name is because the videos or clips that they would be reacting to is not about him. From what I have seen, every time conservative commentators talk about the red pill, they would have a reference clip of a red pill content creator or creators that they are about to react to, and it's not about him. I have seen multiple times when a red pill influencer who is a fan of Olo Tomasi mentions him to other people, and none of them know who he is. People don't know who he is apart from red pill influencers who draw their arguments and ideas from his first book. Conservative commentators don't need to mention him every single time they talk about the red pill because there are many red pill influencers who are more well known than he is and have more viral clips than he does. He is not the center of the red pill, contrary to what he believes and demonstrates with his rhetoric in this very video. By by the time, uh, by the time, let's see, uh, February of next year rolls around, you, uh, he's not going to be the household name that you think he is. Uh, but there's this similarity in messaging across all of all of the channels. Now, as I said, this is local news. Daily Wire is one source, and we know where it's coming from, right? It's coming from Jeremy Boring. 
hell, Jeremy's the one that started the whole thing off. In fact, every single tweet that came after that pretty much follows, and I'd say verbatim, but it's paraphrasing the tweets before it, or it's paraphrasing the messages before it. The red pill is anti-marriage. No, no, we're not. And we never have been. But you know who is? You know who, who you've been quoting as the red pill? Instead of saying my name, instead of saying Myron Gaines' name, instead of saying anyone else in, say, Rule Zero or Rich Cooper or Ryan Stone or you anyone else who's been involved in the Manosphere or the men's self-improvement, you know Andrew Tate by name, but you don't know any of the other personalities, or perhaps you do, you're just unwilling to say anything about them. So instead of saying my name, you will say another name, Pearl Davis. Now, Pearl Davis is the red pill. She's the face of the red pill, right? Because that's all you guys want to quote. Whenever, whenever Pearl quotes something that is outrageous, or it's a firebomb, or she's using the flamethrower, she's throwing grenades, it's usually like, Let's repeal the 19th. You realize where that comes from, right? It's not Pearl Davis who came up with that. And it's not even me, really. Pearl just basically lifts my material, parrots it back, and then butchers it. So you guys can then say, well, those red pill guys or that red pill personality over there. We know that Pearl's team has been either part of Daily Wire or is still part of Daily Wire as well. So you are controlled opposition, quoting your controlled opposition. Pearl Davis is an employee of Daily Wire. I would argue that probably Brian from whatever podcast is also an employee of Daily Wire. Got How do I know that? On the opposite side, or you've got Michael Knowles on there, or you've got Candace Owens. Oh, my Lord. You do realize Candace Owens, her Twitter handle used to be Red Pill Black, right? That's back in the 2014, right, right before the, uh, the first Trump election. I mean, aren't they all Trump elections now? <laughs> every every election for the last three years has been a Trump election. So I'll just throwing that one out there as well. But back in 2015, her Twitter handle, when it was Twitter, used to be Red Pill Black. Because what these guys do is they will take whatever is cool or whatever they think the kids are talking about or whatever they think is like culturally the narrative of the time and they'll throw, they'll, they'll add red to it. They'll add red pill to it. They'll whatever pill to it. White pill, black pill, green pill, your mom's pill. I don't know. Contrary to Rotomas' thinking and assertion that the red pill is a praxeology, it is not. It's a concept that can be used in any context, originating from the movie The Matrix. It's a concept that means being woken up to the truth and reality. I've seen people use the term in the context of race relations, hence Candace Owens, who had no idea about the manosphere. I've heard it used in multiple other contexts because it's a general concept that's not monopolized by the red pill manosphere. No, but the long and the short of it is this, is that whatever their pet ideology is, that's the red pill because nobody's actually really knows truth except for us. Whatever our pet ideology is, that's the red pill. So it gets the, the red pill gets tossed around and it's, it's basically a, a, a political football at this point. And Matt Walsh has decided that uh, it's time to uh, sort of take the gloves off and sort of come at, well, me indirectly. He's never going to mention my name. I want to also point out. This man is embarrassingly desperate for attention. They are responding to Paul's tweet from the 21st of September that called them out by name and the Red Bull pundits under her tweet agreeing with her. It had nothing to do with him. The video for Matt Walsh that he will play will show the tweet by Pearl that started this whole thing. He narcissistically keeps reverting back to himself, putting himself in the center and insinuating that he is feared and unchallengeable. Also point out that before any of this happened, I invited uh, Matt Walsh to be a part of the video that uh, I'm about to show some of the clips that I showed you here. Uh, to in response to a lot of this stuff that had happened this week with uh, the with Big Con, sort of the red pill versus Big Con. Uh, one of the things I did was I called. I was hosting Rule Zero on Saturday. Please go check that one out. You probably make a mental note to what you just said. It will be important for part two of my reaction to Rolo's video. There are two videos that Rolo, with his quote "All Star Cast" close quote, made about Matt Walsh, and he will show you only one of them. 
Matt showed a clip from the first one they did that he was quote-unquote allegedly invited to, but he will only show you clips from the second one. When we get there in part two of my reaction, pay close attention to how he will frame the narrative about Matt Walsh and the video that he will play. I've already seen it. But uh, it was myself, and we had an all-star cast. I, th I, I think everybody really kind of showed up for that one, uh, with the exception of maybe Sterling Cooper. Everybody in uh, in the Rule Zero crew showed up, uh, including my good friend uh, James Sexton. Now, James Sexton is a divorce attorney. He has been a divorce attorney for twenty plus years. He is uh, has got a little bit of internet fame. Actually, I should say a lot of internet fame. Uh, really since the end of July. He Rolo, went on... so are you saying that James Sexton has been a lawyer longer than Matt Walsh has been married? Yes, James Sexton is, in fact, a lawyer, Matt. So apparently he's, he's been... not an alleged lawyer. He is a fucking lawyer, okay? So Make note of this statement here as well. He's saying that Matt Walsh disrespectfully and condescendingly insinuated on the legitimacy of James Saxton's profession. We will see where he gets that from and determine whether Rolo is just going through a diatribe of poisoning the world before he gets to Matt's video. So here's the deal. James went on Soft White Underbelly, a podcast, Soft White Underbelly. That uh, that interview that he did, which was all of like an hour and a half, maybe two hours, ends up exploding. It goes viral because James is a is an interesting character. Um, I've known James for a while. I wish I could say I had caught up with him earlier, but I hadn't. Uh, and then after that, I started making some clips of his uh, his Soft White Underbelly um, interview. And he reached out to me, I reached out to him, and I got him uh, uh, as a guest on my show about mid-August, which was directly after Soft White Underbelly. Since then, uh, he's been on Lex Friedman just recently. So if you haven't seen that interview, it's about a three and a half hour interview. He went out to Austin, Texas, interviewed with Lex Friedman, and um, and it was uh, it was a very good show. I, I think anybody, should, including Matt Walsh, you should probably, I know, I know it's really hard to sit there and watch three and a half hours of a podcast. It's much easier just to carve up bullshit that uh, your employee Pearl Davis says. It might be, might be in your best interest to actually go and watch those before you start popping off about shit that you know nothing about. So yes, James Sexton has been an attorney for 20, 22 years, 21 years, something like that. Uh, at least as long as I have been doing what I've been doing in the red pill space, the manosphere space, whatever you're going to call it. So he's been doing this for quite some time. So he's not an alleged lawyer. He is an actual lawyer and has tried. How many cases did he say he tried? I want to say probably in the thousands right now. But the yeah. guy definitely has the background to know what the fuck he's talking about. So if you're going to try to belittle him and try to like bring him down a notch by saying allege this and allege that, why don't you get your producers to find out who the fuck this guy is before you start mouthing off? Because all that does is lead me to believe that you're responding to something that Pearl put out there that your people probably put in her mouth to begin with. She's just a little puppet at this point. So with that said, I'm going to dig into what uh, Matt Walsh was getting into today. You want to uh, cue that up for me real quick. But I wanted to give you a little bit of perspective before we get into um, before we get into uh, the guts of today's show, uh, I'll pause the video here for today and I'll continue with a part two in my next video. This whole twenty minutes of Rolo talking was just an attempt by him to poison the wall before he got to Matt Walsh's comments. The way he tries to spin Matt's comments demonstrates that he has an extremely deranged hatred of conservative commentators, or at least for those who do not pay homage and attention to him when they talk about the red pill. I'll be posting my part two, where he begins to play Matt Walsh's video shortly. Please subscribe and like the video to stay tuned for my next reaction.